Hey party people, I'm Captain Zeus and welcome back to BP Fun. Today, I'm going to be doing another comic versus TV show comparison episode. This is going to be about... Season 1. Now, spoilers for those that might not want to get spoiled about any potentially future arcs that could be happening in the series, as well as anything into Season 2 if you aren't aware of it as well. So, just wanted to give that warning out in case I accidentally spoil anything. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more nerdy videos like these. And if you want to see us do any comic book to TV show comparison, let me know in the comments below. Now, to start this off, the way Episode 1 started was pretty interesting. With the Guardian saving the President, it didn't go down in the comics, like, at all. However, it was a nice addition to show how important they are, how heroic they were, and their strengths and teamwork skills as well. In the show, when Mark gets his powers, his dad guides him, and his mom is supportive. However, in the comics, it's kind of like they don't care, or it wasn't something special. It was more of like they brushed it off almost. Now, Mark didn't get any guidance from his dad until he stopped the robbery with Titan. He does get his costume around the same time, though, so that is something that stays the same. Now, one major thing about this series, or at least this server season that I noticed, is they did a lot of gender and race swapping with the series. Probably just a fit with the time. I don't know. But here are some of the characters that I noticed that were changed up. For example, they gender swapped Green Ghost from being a bald guy in the comics to a female photographer in the show. No harm no done with a switch up as the original Green Ghost does appear in the Adam Eve origin episode. Now they also did the same thing with Shrinking Ray, a female in the show but a male in the comics. They also had William Gay right off the bat in the show which makes things way less complicated as his comic book counterpart was straight and then dated Eve for quite a while around the same time after the Chicago incident before Eve eventually breaks up with him and he does come out as gay. They also completely got rid of the character trait of William getting triggered about people shortening his name. In the comics, he only wanted to be called William and got triggered when anyone would try to call him anything different. It was weird to say the least, but it was unique. Now, Amber in the comics is a white chick. However, in the show, she is black. Now, speaking of Amber, in the comics, she's straight up annoying in my opinion. However, a little bit more understanding. Now, her TV show counterpart however is just straight up annoying and toxic it's this weird toxic trope that's been happening lately with romance leads where they know the hero's identity get mad at them for not revealing it and try gaslighting them into it being their fault that the relationship didn't last and trying to make it about themselves when their partner is literally out there saving lives as a hero we've seen this in my adventures with superman with lois and clark as well as masters of the universe revelations with he-man and tila now they did make a lot of characters better in the show for example mark's mom debbie she was more than a background character and had real substance compared to her comic book counterpart in the early days. Now, same thing with Damien Darkblood. In the comics, he was literally a joke. Wasn't even a detective, really. He was so behind when it came to the Guardians of the Globe murder investigation that after the Chicago incident, he was still trying to solve it when everyone told him Omni-Man's the one did it. It was all over the news. Now, his series counterpart was on top of the case. He was way smarter than his comic book counterpart, and they wrote him off by saying he got too close to the truth, and then they sent him back to hell, which is way better than him just not appearing anymore in this show or in the comics he's also more of a monkey in the comics than he is a demon now the timeline for the series has been swapped around a lot from the comics which was intentional for example mark meets teen team and has more confrontations with people before his dad even kills the guardians which isn't till a good while into the story and it wasn't as crazy as the show made it out to be in the comics it was more like an assassination no one really saw it coming but in the show as we've seen <laughs> It's just straight up murder. And some of the storylines they did was way more condensed than their comic book counterparts, like the Reanimate storyline. Now that storyline was spread out over the span of probably over a year in the comics, and Mark didn't really care about the situation until it was almost too late, which is very similar to the series counterpart, although that only takes place in the span of like two days. Now some storylines they kept the exact same or really close to it, like the ending of season one where Omni-Man reveals the truth, or the arc with Titan taking down Machine Head. But there were others that they did that were completely omitted or just changed a lot. For example, some of the ones that they omitted was the school serial killer, which I won't go too much into detail in case they do add this in the latter half of season two. There was also the Black Samson Butler storyline. In the comics, Black Samson was desperate to return to being a hero and needed his suit to do so, but was waiting for it to be completed. When the Guardians died, Black Samson's Butler takes the finished suit and attacks the funeral for the deceased heroes, blaming them for Black Samson's losing his powers. He does get locked up and Samson gets the suit afterwards and does visit him a few times. Now in the show, his Butler is 
is not even mentioned and he already has a suit from the get-go now there's also several small incidences that happen that they remove probably for time sync like invincible and team team fighting the lizard league now some that they changed would be like the flax invasion in the comics team team wasn't there to fight them it was just invincible and omni man they pushed back the invasion but a little bit later in the day they just randomly abduct omni man after stopping a mall bombing with invincible instead of him just diving into the closed portal like what happened to the series this was an event that was very short in the comics but they decided to expand upon in the series which i did enjoy and when invincible fought doc seismic he did it alone while adam eve wasn't there and it wasn't that long of a fight and the big one was cecil didn't know omni man killed the guardians until he admitted it in the comics now in the show we all see that cecil had a suspicion since day one but in the comics he was pretty oblivious nobody suspected him cecil wasn't monitoring him dark blood was not investigating him and there was no big confrontation with cecil and omni man where he had to fight a kaiju in fact he had already defeated a kaiju when, when immortal came hauling over to him and they started fighting mark showed up when omni man killed him and the rest well you saw how that happened in the show why did you make me do this you're fighting so you can watch everyone around you die think mark you'll outlast every fragile insignificant being on this planet you'll live to see this world crumble to dust and blow away and debbie only found out after cecil talked to her after mark got beaten to a pulp she didn't hear or witness anything again she was more of a background character in the comics at the start now some of my opinions for season ones are as follows overall i think season one is a lot better than its comic book counterpart when it comes to the stories that took place and the changes that they did there are some things that i wish they would have just not changed at all like amber but everything else honestly i think was great for season one i thought that the animation could have been a bit better but it wasn't bad i just had higher expectations from Amazon. Now the voice acting was absolutely amazing. They pulled out all the stops and the voices fit the characters almost perfectly. Not to mention the amazing soundtrack and original score they have for the series. I expect this series to be around for a while. There are three compendiums for this comic and season one only covered about a quarter of the first compendium so I definitely recommend you reading it if you ever do get the chance. But that's my opinions and some of the things that I noticed that were different between the series and the comic books for season one. If I missed anything let me know in the comments below and tell me also what you guys think about invincible as a show i'm going to also do the adam eve origin episode as well so keep a lookout for that and i'll also do part two of season two when that comes out thank you all so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe i'm captain zeus and i'll see you guys later see ya